Learning the concept of natural selection could be challenging for some students, as it is abstract and composed of quite a few steps. It is also important for students to understand the logic underlying the natural selection process to answer GCSE and A-level questions, as they often require students to describe the full process in a specific context, such as this one. In this video, we would like to introduce three amazing activities we're currently using to teach the concept of natural selection. The first is wool worm picking, then sticky dogs, and the fet rabbit simulation. We'd just like to remind you, we did not create all of these activities, so please contact us for credit. The first activity is wool worm picking. These are the materials you need. Different color wool fragments, forceps, buckets, and a grassland. Before the activity, the wool fragments are scattered across a certain area of the grassland. These wool fragments represent different colours of worms on the grassland. You then can set the scene where the students are groups of birds hunting for worms on the grassland, working in their group within a time limit. Students search for the worms across that area of grassland and put them into their group's bucket. At the end, they count the number of worms they caught and observe their colours. Interestingly, students often find in those sharp colours but struggle to find those in dull colours. You can then tell them each colour indeed carries different scores and ask them to work out the total score they have got. This can then be followed by a reflection session among students to discuss their results and what caused such an outcome to help them form abstract conceptualisation. This activity allows students to experience the full process of natural selection Mutation occurs so there is variation in the worm colors, and the students can mostly find the sharp colors worms, but not those in dull colors, because those in dull colors are camouflaged by the colors of the grass. So the students, who are the birds in the game, cannot spot and eat them easily. We can therefore say that the worms in dull color are more suited and adapted to the environment. So they survive and reproduce and passing on their dull color values to their offsprings. Over time, there would be an increase in the frequency for the dull color values in the worm population as they were not easily caught and eaten by birds. However, sharp colored worms can easily be spotted and caught, so it is harder for them to survive and reproduce to pass on their sharp color values to their offspring. And over time, there would be a decrease in the frequency for the sharp color values in the worm population. The second activity is sticky dogs. It is a rather simple setup as you just need some design your dog sheets and a script. Each student is given a design your dog sheet. Students then need to design a dog in the game by circling the features they want on the left column and drawing their dog on the right box. Student starts with 10 of their design dogs, as shown by the tallies in the bottom box. By going through five different events happening on the Sticky Dog Island, students end up with different numbers of dogs. For example, in the first generation, it's the height of summer and a very high temperature. So dogs with long hair unfortunately die due to heat stroke. So students with long hair dogs would lose some of their tallies. However, dogs with short hair survive and reproduce so students with short hair dogs would add some tallies. Same as the wool worm picking activity, the sticky dogs activity allows the students to experience the full process of natural selection, depending on the unique features of their own designed dogs and unexpected events happening on the sticky dog island. This activity also conveys an important concept that mutation randomly occurs. Just as how students randomly choose their dog features in the first place, without knowing what is going to happen. Moreover, some dogs may become extinct when the number drops to one or less. So this activity can also be used to teach different factors contributing to extinction. A great advantage of this activity is that it is quite flexible, as you can come up with any creative events happening on the Sticky Dog Island, such as new predators, new diseases, and climate change. The third activity is a rabbit simulation developed by FET Interactive Simulations. Students can add a mate for the rabbit on their screen. By introducing mutation on the rabbit, fur colour and environmental changes like the presence of predators and food shortage, 
students can observe the change in the white and brown rabbit populations over time. Students can also change the habitat to an arctic environment and observe how the rabbits with different fur colours adapt differently in different habitats. There is also a more challenging and complex lab version where there are more types of mutations and environmental changes that the students can choose from. You can find the link to the simulation in the caption box below. This simulation serves as an excellent active experimentation activity in the experiential learning cycle, in which students try out what they have learned about natural selection and apply the knowledge into new situations. By allowing students to choose their own types of mutation and environmental changes, this prompts them to draw a linkage between the unique selective pressure in the environment that they created and the changes in the white and brown rabbit populations. Students can then write a paragraph on what is happening in their self-created environment to apply the concept of natural selection. These are some suggested key terms that we can provide our students with while they are writing their paragraphs. In GCSE, for example, variation, mutations, survival, reproduction, passing on the genes. In A-level, Variation, mutation, selective pressure, survival, reproduce, passing on the genes, allele frequency, and directional selection. We hope that you enjoyed this video on different experiential learning strategies. We, as teachers, can use to teach the concept of natural selection in GCSE and A-level. If you have any other interesting ideas and experiences on teaching natural selection, please do share in the comment section below. We're really looking forward to learning from and exchanging knowledge with all of you. Please also stay tuned for our upcoming videos on how we can adopt experiential learning in teaching other biology topics under the UK national curriculums. Thank you.